is that they have all got a story. You don't even really think about What's that the date story. On this one? The date? Are you suggesting it appears to be an early painting? <laughs> no, no, well, this is a bit strange. I, I suppose I should talk about it because most painters can't waste paint. So if sometimes I'll put glad wrap over the, the, the paint to keep it wet, and sometimes I've got an interesting mix on the palette. So at, at, and I will either look for a raw piece of canvas or something to just scrape it onto. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. But the sky came up in one scrape. So I just painted the seascape to complement it. And it's fairly recent, but it does have a different look maybe because of that process. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, it was just a beautiful sky. And you, there, there are, you're obligated to also, in this peculiar pastime, to capitalise on, let's say, errors or a gestural movement that you can be tempted to say, oh, that's a mistake. And, and I've said to students, born of my own experience, if you've made what you perceive as an error, integrate it, don't eliminate it. Because the chances of doing it a second time or making the same mistake are there. So you may as well integrate what you might call an error. But one of the greatest, let's call it a fluke, but, but it's not really once you make the decision to see it as a workable painting. This particular time, I had a lot of paint left over and sometimes what I do is just seal a piece of paper, depending on the amount of paint, I'll seal it and just paint over it sometime later. So once again, you haven't wasted the paint and you've pretended by sealing the paper that it's not wasted and useful. So. Uh, this particular day I got a very large sheet out about five foot by four and I just started to scrape up the paint with the palette knife and throw it on ready to scrape it and it didn't even look just as long as it hit the paper and as I was coming down to the final couple of scrapes I looked at it and I thought gee that's an interesting pattern it had a bit of a Fred Williams-y feel to it but that didn't worry me and the paint was still still wet enough, not dripping wet, but I knew if I sprayed it, it would drip. So I quickly pinned it on the backing board and then sprayed heavily above the logs. They, they were islands of paint. And they started to bleed from uh, where they hit the paper and dribble all the way down. And and I was just enjoying the experimentation, but I also had done a lot of bush, bush walking, not bush walking, beach walking at the entrance, and a lot of observing of tide coming in and out and the remnants that are left, um, and that's what it looked like. And that's what I called it, and it's travelled through a few exhibitions and now happens to be in the collection of one Rachel Carroll. I swapped it for a puppy dog. <laughs> but, but it really did get a good reaction. And, and the, the only slight problem I had, and it's no big deal, but it was chosen to go in one of the Australian Watercolour Institute publications, the most recent, I think. And I try to pride myself on writing pretty neatly and printing very neat. So I put it in with its title, Low Tide Remnants. Forevermore it'll be known as Low Tide Penance because <laughs> that's how they interpreted my 
remnants. <laughs> there, there you go. Can't be sure. And I can't, I can't criticise anyone because they sent proof sheets out to read, and I still approved the title. So there you go. I did that with one of my Venice paintings too, and it was reproduced back to front. But it was so well balanced that it, uh, I've often said to students once again that um, if, you can, if you can look at a realistic painting upside down and still enjoy it, that's a sign of good tone, colour, composition, etc, etc. So uh, to be fooled by my own piece and to see it in reverse and be prepared to say that's how I painted it is an indication of that I have. <laughs> Shall we move?